Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for mCreator. Today we're going to be looking at the community voted for tutorial which is the quest tutorial. It's something that I put together so I have a simple GUI screen that we can use for displaying the things. There is a time limit on how long the uh, quest can be taken to actually complete. Uh, I will be speeding through it because there's obviously um, I want to keep the tutorial as short as possible, but uh, also I'll be in a creative, so it'll be a lot easier to complete. In survival, it'll be a little bit harder because of the resources and stuff that are needed, especially depending on how difficult you make the items and tasks uh, to basically get. So to give a breakdown of how this basically works, there is a progress of how many tasks have been completed for the goal. There is a task description or a goal description right here. And there is, if it is complete or not, this basically controls if the um, quest is should be given or not from there. Uh, below that, it will list the reward in a string text and it will display the item through a condition um, for an item or a image texture in the GUI. Uh, there's also challenges, which are basically a more simpler version of the goals, which are separate than having to use tasks, but basically run the same um, method. So in our case, what we need to do is craft 24 soul lanterns to basically get one netherite um, ignit. The other thing that we can basically do is the goals which require the tasks. So we get 20 pieces of iron for that. So if we go to our next page, then we can see that there is basically mine eight iron ore, and then it lists how our progress is, and then it tells us if it's complete or not. So the other tasks are there are passed here. So there's five tasks in total that we have to complete to complete our goal and we can complete the challenge at any time. So let's start with task one. We need to mine eight iron ore, and the next thing that we need to do is basically smelt that iron ore. So I'm going to quickly grab eight, actually nine, and then what I'm going to do is go grab a blast furnace, because it's gonna be a lot faster to do that way, and we're also gonna need a crafting table later on. And what we're also going to need is some coal. So I'm going to grab four pieces of coal. I'm going to place down two blast furnaces. And I'm going to smelt up four each. For one for each uh, blast furnace. This will go a lot faster than just one. All right, so the other thing that we need to do is mine out some iron ore. Eight pieces to be exact. So I'm just going to place down eight of these and break them in creative and we should have that task complete. So mine eight. Uh, okay, something is a little bit off on that. I'll have to check the code. All right, so there's that. And the next thing that we need to do is basically smelt that so we can grab these. And then we'll place those down in here to create the next thing, which is our craft 64 ignit or nuggets iron nuggets so we'll place that in here and then we're also going to need some sticks so i'm just going to grab two of those we're going to need to craft up eight torches so we'll need two pieces of coal and two sticks and that should be complete now and then our last thing that we need to do is craft up eight lanterns so we're going to quickly place this like that and put torches in the middle and then we have eight lanterns and then the goal if we go back to the goal we need to place down eight lanterns so if we place down six of them it should say we have placed down six and there we go we got our iron if we place down another one it won't give us the reward because it's been disabled so that's basically how that works now if we wanted to craft up soul lanterns what we need to do is uh, just grab our uh, soul torches and then we're going to need some nuggets and then I'm going to just go like that and we're going to just craft up a bunch of those so 
probably need more than that. All right, so we'll craft up that, and we got a netherite ignit from that. So if we go back to request, we can see that we've completed it all. All right, so that's basically the gist of it. I'm just going to quickly take a look at what's going on with the uh, progress bar right here for, what was it, this one? Or I think it was the first task that was having issues. So we'll, I'll take a look at the first task, just make sure that it's running properly. And then we can take a look at the code. All right, so another thing that I wanted to quickly just uh, announce, I did fix that issue, so that's all sorted out now, uh, is there is a game rule in place where you can actually set the quest duration. This is in, I believe, ticks. I need to double check that one sec. Yeah, indeed, it is in ticks. So uh, for one, for the default value, uh, the game rule here is actually 70, to thousand and this will last uh one hour so there is uh if you want to quickly calculate the math for how long you want it's uh 60 or pardon me 20 uh times um 60 which is one minute and then if you want for hours then it's uh 60 so it's 20 times 60 times 60 and that will give you one hour if you want more than one hour then you would basically need to multiply that by whatever amount of hours you would want so for example this would do four hours so that's basically how the thing works with math so in our case the one hour is 72,000 ticks and you would set that for the default value uh, it's already set to that by default, so that's basically how that's set up. Uh, now let's move into Amp Creator, and I'll show you uh, the breakdown of how some of the scripts all set up, and then we'll basically just do some final notes. All right, so there's actually quite a bit of variables for this particular quest system. So we have a uh, quest time left. Now this is a number. A lot of these up here are all global um, quest things for global maps. Now this basically, the reason why it's on a global map is so it's basically um, going to syn synchronize across all players, not just the players that uh, synchronize across specific players so we can synchronize that by setting it to the entire map and that will synchronize everything across everyone uh, the persistent player is basically anything that we want on the player side so basically even if they die they'll still have the um, variables that they've achieved for that time limit uh, there is also a few notable things for example uh, most of these up here are just uh, the string task names and stuff like that. So we'll be seeing a lot of these in the actual um, actual uh, script and stuff. So a lot of these are just string based. So we're actually testing for things that are strings rather than certain values. And then we'll be able to get and give certain rewards and stuff based on that. So for example, the goal if it's a certain string, then what we're doing is we're going to give a specific item based on that string. Same thing with the um, challenge and such. So that's basically how that's all set up. So there's challenge reward and cha uh, quest goal or quest reward. Quest reward is actually the goal reward where the challenge reward is the um, actual reward for the challenge itself and then there is a whole bunch of other technical stuff uh, behind that so there is also player quest challenge number so again these are player persistent because it has to do with the screen I believe so screen page is the uh, actual page that the player is on for the GUI I'll cover that in just a second 
and then these things right here basically lock the actual um, reward system so it, they can't just infinitely get the rewards after they've completed it and a lot of these other things are just to keep track of the quest numbers and if they've completed it and or not and how much they've completed so again all the number ones here are just to test for the tasks goals etc and these logical ones are for the actual logic variables that you saw in the gui these are the string names for the actual uh, quests and tasks and challenges as well there's also time left, which is the actual value of the time. Now this is across all players, where the, uh, where is it, challenge, or where is it, I saw it just a second ago, uh, quest time left, and then if you scroll over here, this is a string based one which is basically a f more friendly version of the actual time rather it being displayed in ticks it's actually displayed in something easier for players to read which is broken down into a time based thing so it will put a minute uh, hour or um, seconds left when it actually has that many ticks left <laughs> All right, so let's go into the folder structure and there's quite a bit to cover. So there is challenges, goals. These are the challenges and goals where you can find the script for those. There is also tasks, which are for the goals themselves. All the tasks are in subfolders. For example, our tasks for the lanterns were found in this one. I'll cover that in just a second. We also got script for the script uh, that we need to give rewards. Uh, I believe there is the quest time script and the player quest reset. So those are important scripts there. And then there is also the game role, which we have the game role set up there and the GUI with all the buttons, conditions, and key binds. So let's start with the actual GUI because it's probably the most complicated thing to actually understand. And there is the quest screen, so there's a lot going on here. If I zoom in a little bit, it'll be easier to see. So all this on the side here is basically text that is overlapping certain features. I've tried to keep it a little bit organized. It's hard because all this is overlapping the actual text and stuff in the GUI itself. So if we click on the, the two buttons right here, we have actually buttons that uh, go to the next, previous screen and next screen. These are the little arrows on the side. Our GUI texture is actually here for the actual background. And then we have our page names, which are listed above here. There's also the goals and certain titles located here. Uh, these overlap each other, but there's also conditions on them where for displaying. Now, a lot of these actually have conditions for displaying things. Uh, for example, the gray text are all disabled if it's not uh, for that particular page. Uh, we get that page number based on when we click the button. So we change the page number based on the button and the contents of the actual GUI update for that page. So in our case, this is the procedure for displaying that particular thing. Uh, under here, there is also the um, variable that's actually set underneath. This will display the actual the actual script for or text for the actual goal itself. Um, one thing to note is you don't want your descriptions for your text too long, or it might go over to the next page. It's just something to keep in mind when you're actually working with a double page like this. And again, it uses the same page condition. And if we go to the condition, uh, we have different page conditions here. So we have quest screen display page one condition. So page one, and this is the condition for that. 
and that would be for this one right here. If we go down a little bit to the other ones, which are challenges, and you can see that it's also on condition one right here as well. So this would be our page one. We also have different conditions to basically display the contents of this page. Uh, again, items are stacked as well. They follow a very similar method. If we were to actually click on a item, so if we go into this one right here, this uh, all the rewards for the quests can be basically overlapped and then used with the condition for specific rewards. So for example, I have the diamond for a specific diamond condition. So it will only display if there's a specific diamond uh, for the quest. So we have those conditions here for the goals and there's also challenges for items as well, which are these following three. So that's where these three or three, six, I guess, items come in because there's six different types. Uh, you can adjust that as much as you want, but the conditions must apply still. All right, so that's basically how that works. Um, I won't go into every setting because that would be nuts. There's quite a bit of content to actually cover here. All you need to know is each page has a condition and these are the conditions for the, well, not that one. These are the conditions for those uh, contents for those pages and items and basically the images have their own conditions as well. Both are broken up into goals and then challenges below. So that's basically that. And it will take a quick look at the actual goal and see what this looks like. So basically what we're doing is we're testing for the quest reward. Now this is basically the goal reward and then we're testing if it's um, the value of that particular string and if it's equal to screen page number one. Now basically screen page number one is going to be our page that we're targeting as well. So in our case, our quest page is for our goals itself is on page one. This is our first setting for that. If we change this, the whole, both pages here actually update to a second chapter kind of thing of the book. So, we're, we need a test for that. Uh, the other thing with quests is pages will vary depending on what thing. So quest screen page and then one. And if we go into page two, then it will say two and so on. So that's basically that. Uh, the conditions are pretty straightforward when it comes down to things. Keybinds, uh, this basically controls how we get into the quest uh, book itself. So I have set it up so it just opens up the quest screen and the keybind for that for what we have is just set to P and then we're running it on a uh, key pressed. So that's basically what goes on with that. And then we have our buttons, which are just testing if uh, this is the next button. So we're testing if um, our maximum page number is equal to or less than. So our screen page, our current screen page is equal to, or pardon me, less than four, which is our maximum screen page. And then we will increase that number by one. And that will just make the values of the contents basically update each time we hit the button. If we want to make it go down, then we just need to test if it's greater than one and then subtract by one. And then that will lower the page number. For the game roll, uh, we have all these settings here. These are the settings. I have the default uh, time set up through the game rule itself. So any default value for the game rule is what your timer is going to be. Uh, it's not actually set through the 
actual uh, variables itself. It's actually set later on when the game starts. So this is through the actual variables itself, uh, or pardon me, game rules. So we, I have it under a number. It's under miscellaneous for the category. I've just filled out the rest of the information and set the value to one hour. So this is the 72,000 uh, mark for the ticks. All right, so then we'll... the game rules taken care of. We have only the script to actually cover now, and then we'll follow up by the quests and stuff after. So there is a few pieces of things that happen here. We'll cover the first one. So when the quest actually runs out of time, we're going to basically reset the quest time. So what we need to do here is we're going to actually basically test if the quest time is uh, equal to or less than zero. And then we're going to uh, reset them for all players. So what this is doing is it's testing for the global um, time if it's equal to or less than zero. So if it runs out, and then it's going to reset all the player variables so that they can continue in the next time that the quests are started. That's basically what happens here. This is the quest time uh, script, which is a little bit complicated to understand, but I'll break it down into sections. So the first thing is we're testing if it is equal to or less than zero. If that's the case, then what we're going to do is we're going to basically set the quest time left, which is our global variable for the world. And we're going to set that to our game rule duration. So every time the duration of the quest time resets, this value will update based on the game rule. After which, what we're doing is running from server side only, and then we're going to set the uh, some local variables. So we have local random goal reward, local ran or local random challenge reward, and random goal and random challenge. All these are randomly generated, so we can basically generate things. That's what these sections are here for. So the first thing that we have is if you want to generate a new random event, then what you have to do is you have to basically create a new uh, thing. So if you want to add a new reward, then you have to adjust the percentage of these values and you have to add a new if statement, if else statement, and then you would create a section here, you would adapt the script to have that random percent that you want it to basically generate at. You also have to define the value of the actual string for that reward too. Now this reward will go across all other procedures, so you have to kind of make sure that it's set up properly. I'll This will make more sense when we go into the, the challenges and rewards. But um, you can use the default values uh, if you just want to basically test it out. Uh, it's not too complicated. This is just the actual string that we're using to determine what reward we're giving. So it has to be unique when we're actually giving it. And if you're adding a new one, then you just have to adjust the percentage given for the randomizer. The value should be between zero and one. So, for example, if we wanted to add four of these, then we would basically move that over. And if you divide one divided by um, four, then we would have 0 0.75. This would become 0 0.75. And this would become 0 0.5. And this would become 0 0.5. And that would become 0 0.25 and this would become 0 0.25, so like that. And then we just need to basically specify what our reward will be. So uh, we could give 100 or 64 redstone dust, and then we could use that as a new type of reward. 
All right, below that we have our challenge reward, which is basically the exact same thing that we're doing with this one, it's just um, for challenge rewards. Then we have the random challenges. So I only have one challenge actually set up, but same method as above, you would just basically add new uh, ranges for the random chance that would actually generate, and then you would set the actual uh, challenge description for that. Now you want to keep it as short as possible. So craft uh, 24 soul lanterns is probably a good amount to actually keep it around for character wise. And the last one is the actual goals. Now we only have one uh, goal in place, but if you wanted to add another one, then you would do the exact same thing. You would add that and then you copy this over and you would set this to 0 0.5 and then this to 1 and then you want to set this to 0 0.5 and this needs to be greater than and then you should be good to go or pardon me um, yeah greater than uh, 0 0.5 and then you need to basically copy over your quest goal and all your tasks for these procedures. You also have to give your new tasks a name if you're going to create new tasks or you can use existing tasks, but uh, make sure that it's set up so it's like this. All right, so after that we have our condition down here. Now this is just if it's equal to or less than zero below that what we have is our actual timer for calculating the time for the actual procedure so in our case we're getting the global time we're going to subtract that by uh, our quest time we're resetting the quest time subtracting the quest time by uh, the quest time minus 0 0.33 now i'm not sure why this actually is a little bit different, but it needs to subtract the actual quest time by 0 0.33 or 333.0 0 0.333 because I noticed uh, running it from world update tick in the latest patch for 2021.1, uh, it's a little bit wonky for the update ticks. Uh, this seems to be the exact value that you need for calculating the ticks for uh, for some reason. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, the next thing that we're doing is we're going to divide that number by, um, so our time seconds is going to be our quest time left divided by 20. Now this is our ticks, so we're dividing the ticks by 20 and we're going to get the seconds for the local variable. This will display how many seconds we have left if it's uh, under a minute. If it's a minute or um, between in the minute values that we have left, then we're going to get our seconds. We're gonna divide that by 60, and then that will create our minutes. And then if it's in the hours, then it's going to basically get the minutes and so on. We're gonna divide that by 60. And if it's in days, then what we need to do is we need to get our hours, divide that by 24, and then we can use that in our following script. So basically our following script basically tests for the exact ticks for the time. If it's equal to or greater than the high number here is basically our days. The high number, if it's less than or greater than this is our hours and then we're testing for our hours and our minutes and then we're basically going to display minutes and then the following one is if it's under 1200 this is going to display the s for seconds so basically that's all that's going on there we're also making sure that we display the right type of data that we basically set up here so minutes hours days and seconds down here so that's how the timer script works. You shouldn't need to adjust that too much outside of the top part of that script.
We also have the rewards for the goals. So this is basically where the goals, uh, rewards for the goals come in. Now, if we go back to our timer and we'll take a look at the actual variables that we've set here. So one diamond, and then it has diamonds after it. That is also used in this script here. So we can see that this is the exact same value. This will basically uh, be used for generating the actual reward itself. This is also used in the procedure for the um, GUI as well for determining what is used for that particular reward. So we're just basically getting the quest reward and we're going to be displaying that as our text for what reward it is going to be given. And we're doing that for all our different types of rewards. If you want to basically generate more than one item, then you can basically, for example, gold ignits, repeat two times, and this will generate two items. Um, also, one thing to note is the player lock goal. Uh, this needs to be set to false, and when it's set to true, it will not generate the rewards after the player has basically completed that quest. This prevents the player from generating multiple amounts for placing more items down or completing other additional quests that are techni com technically complete but can still give things to the player. So that's that one and the other one which is the main challenge request script is basically the same thing. This one what we're doing is we're basically locking the player uh, challenges instead though. And again, we're using strings to basically determine what reward the player gets. All right, so that's all the quests or the script for that. Uh, that's the most complicated part. Now we have the challenges which is really straightforward stuff this is going to be basically the remainder of the challenges tasks and goals so what's going to go on here is basically we're going to run a global procedure so in our case we're testing if the player has crafted something we're going to test if the uh, quest is to craft our string uh, which is also defined in our other things and we're going to test for the player quest challenge number. So this is going to deter determine how many times the player has crafted the thing for the challenge. And then what we're going to do is test if the player has completed the challenge. If it's false, then what we're going to do is test for the provided item, which should be a item that we want for them to craft. So in our case, it's a soul lantern. And then what we're going to do in return is basically set the player quest challenge number. And then we're going to get the player ch quest challenge number plus number of items in provided item stack. And what this is going to do is if they craft a group of items from that particular stack, then it's going to account for all of them, not just the one crafting cycle. So that's important how this is set up. Uh, after which uh, this is broken up into two procedures for two tests. The other thing that we're testing for is if it is equal to or greater than our full number. And if this is true, then what we're doing is we're basically just going to complete the has player quest. So this disables, so does this after, and then we're going to give the reward. So this is our reward script that we basically just covered for the challenges. And then we're going to make sure that it locks after and that will basically stop the um, actual challenge from being completed over and over again uh, even before the challenge uh, runs out or the, the quest time runs out. Uh, goals are exactly the same way set up it's just a little bit different uh, for our goals we basically want to test if the block is placed and we're going to test for if the block is the current block is a 
uh, regular lantern and all the other settings are exactly the same except for this we're just increasing the actual variable by one and again we're going to make sure that the reward script is for the goals not the challenges but same basic idea <laughs> And that leaves or tasks left. So if we go to tasks, and then we have our different folders for our tasks. And then in these folders, we have our task one. So this is pretty much the exact same thing. We're going to test if the block is broken. It's very similar to how the place block for the goals work. So we're going to test if it's iron ore that's being broken, if that's true then what we want to do is we want to uh, follow up with completing the quest here. Now this is actually um, required in the, or quest five is, pardon me. So if we go back to, or not quest five, task five. So if you go to goals, lantern, it does test for quest or task five to be complete. So this is one of the things that we're running here so player has completed quest task 5 so if we go back to tasks lantern task 1 all we're doing is we're basically testing if the task 1 has been completed and then we're going to do that so with the task 2 it's a little bit different uh, we need to test if task 2 has been completed and the iron and such will be Pretty much the same now this is if the item is smelted we're going to use provided item stack and then very similar to how quests or challenges were set up so we're testing for the item and then we're running the same script here all right so i think you guys get the basic idea of how all these are set up so again this is the task three and this is another item crafted task so that one and the other one is crafting lanterns. So those are all the different types of procedures. Outside of that, that was a handful to actually say, so I'm gonna let my voice rest for a little while, and then I have the regular gameplay to record. Outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. The actual workspace and will be in the description with all the procedures and the um, conditions and all the other fun little, dip, uh, little doodads of the actual project and it will be available on github for a in the description will be the link as well so if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out